Test Freezer Cold Plunge, and I am here today to talk about how to get water out of your chest freezer if you have sealed the drain. So why would people seal the drain? Well, sometimes the drain leaks down at the bottom, depending on the type of chest freezer that you have. And sometimes if you've installed a liner, uh, whether that's a pond liner or a spray liner, the drain will not be accessible. The uh, first most simple method that uh, you could do is just using a siphon. You could also use a number of different pumps, anything from a bilge pump to a transfer pump. So I'm going to take you from like the least expensive all the way up to the most expensive method. I mean, short of siphoning with buckets. The one thing you do not want to do, do not try to tump or tilt your chest freezer um, to get the water out. That's not a good thing. That last little bit of remaining water, it's best to use towels to get that out. So. Uh, as always, with most things we do in the chest freezer, whether we're using it, working on it, cleaning it, maintaining it, you do want to unplug it before you do anything. One of the things about the siphon, you can, if you want to, use this as like a giant straw to get the water going. There is another way to do that though. If you put this thing into, put your tube into the the chest freezer. But what you want to do is get all of the entire hose filled with water. And then once all the air has escaped, what you're going to do is keep one side in the water, and then the other side you're going to put your thumb on it, much like you would with a straw. And then you're going to take that over here. That's a pretty slow method. Um, but it works and it's cheap. All you have to do is keep that one little hose around. There's nothing to maintain. Siphons also do come with a hand pump, so that will speed up the process a little bit. So it requires a lot of manual work. The other way to get water out of your chest freezer is to use a pump. You could use a bilge pump or you could use a transfer pump. The transfer pump that I have is a Liberty Pumps. It's a model 331. I don't remember the flow rate on it, but uh, I originally bought this when I was in an apartment, did not have a hose bib close by, and I needed a way to get water into my chest freezer. So I bought the Liberty Pump to take water out of the bathtub, down the hall, and into the living room where I had my chest freezer set up. And it worked really well for that, as well as for draining the chest freezer. You'll need two hoses to make this setup work. One of them is the output hose, and one is the intake hose. The output hose, you can just use any standard garden hose or a flexible hose, a cheap hose. It doesn't matter what kind of hose you use for the, the output. And then the other type of hose is the intake. You could use a regular garden hose, but uh, depending on the strength of the pump, it might actually cause that hose to collapse because there's so much pressure coming in. So that could actually break the hose or impair the ability of the hose to actually flow the water as quickly as it could. So really the ideal situation is to get a special hose that is actually meant for pumps, and uh, at least for the intake again, so that way uh, you don't have to worry about that hose collapsing. Let's turn on the transfer pump and see what happens. One quick tip in wrapping up is that if you do have Epsom salts in your chest freezer, be careful about where you put that water. For example, you don't want to get it anywhere near your car, it will take off the paint. So I hope you enjoyed this video about siphons versus pumps. And if you have any questions, you can get in touch with me on the Facebook group at Chest Freezer Cold Plunge or on my website at chestfreezercoldplunge.com.